a lot of great stuff to check out, so let's start with some manga. Here we have Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess Volume 8, looking really awesome. I love the art on this and can't wait to have the complete uh, series wrapped up and hopefully we get another Zelda adaptation. Maybe we finally get the Skyward Sword localized for North America. Got my hands on Demon Slayer Volume 22, although I'm not going to show any art because, yeah, it's near the end and I don't want to spoil it for anybody who might be tuning in randomly. But I also got my hands on My Hero Academia Volume 28. I need to catch up on this. Looking really awesome. I love the art on this manga and that cover. Look at that cover. That's great. Magi Volumes 1 and 2. This is something that I've always wanted to collect in some shape or form. I love the anime for this series. Unfortunately, I'm not going to support uh, those ridiculous Aniplex prices, so I'd rather get the original source material started out with Magi 1 and 2. I, I do have Volume 3 on the way. Didn't arrive for this video, but nonetheless, I'm really excited to collect the series. From Inuasana, we got Dead Dead Demons Dead Dead Dead, Dead Destruction Volume 2 and 3, continuing that series. Looking really awesome. I love the artwork. You know, it's a Sato. You get top-notch material and uh, quality art when you go into one of his books. Next up, we've got Volume 12 of Beastars, looking really awesome. One of my favorite uh, series that I'm reading right now. I know it ended in Japan, but I'm reading it this way physically and cannot wait to continue this story. Got my hands on the 8th volume of Pokemon Adventures Collector's Edition. This covers the Leaf Green Fire Red era and it's a little sad that it's ending with volume 10, these big editions, but I'm pretty sure we're going to get more of these uh, trim sizes uh, for the following stuff. It is to my understanding that it's not connected to the adventures that we saw on these volumes, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be collected anyways, but yeah. The Legendary Fist of the North Star, Volume 1 hardcover, I had to do it. It's such an iconic action manga from the 80s that influenced a generation that, yeah, I had to jump on it and get myself a copy as well. I will probably do a video on it once I get more volumes in and can read a good chunk of the story. It's been a long time since I've hauled any One Piece on this channel. You might not know this, but I collect One Piece in this format, the Omnibus 3-in-1s. Uh, that is my preferred format. I got myself, you can see here, volume 67 to 69 and 70 to 72. You might have seen my video on the channel, or you may have not, because, you know, not everybody watches everything for the channel, but I made a video on Opus from Satoshi Kon. I am trying to collect his entire works. In that video, I mentioned that uh, for some reason I forgot about his manga stuff, and I want to rectify that. So I got Opus, and here we have Tropic of the Sea, and I do have the other books on the way as well, so stay tuned for that. Gantz Omnibus, Volume 6. If you were around on social media and all the forums and videos and internet, a lot of people were hesitant and they did not believe that this omnibus would come out. Everybody thought the line was discontinued, but nope, here is volume 6 and volume 7 is also solicited. Really excited about that. Giganto Maxia from the late Kentaro Miura. I have not read this. I've only read Berserk from Miura, but I wanted to honor such a legendary creator by getting his different material that is available in the US. Unfortunately, not a whole lot, but here is Giganto Maxia. Looking forward to reading this. Miura's artwork alone is the biggest selling point here, right? So I'm very much looking forward to enjoying Giganto Maxia. Next up, one of my current ongoing favorite manga. It is To Your Eternity. Here we have volume 13. Quickly browsing through the volume as to not spoil anything too big, but this is such a wonderfully drawn, uh, beautifully told series that I highly recommend it. I do have a video on it, but I want to make an updated one covering a good portion of the story, a, a good solid review on it. But yeah, I do recommend To Your Eternity, a wonderful series. One of my guilty pleasures is Rent a Girlfriend. This rom-com is excellent and wholesome in my honest opinion. And here is volume six with the best girl on the cover. Uh, Sumi is my favorite character from that series. I'm really enjoying the art and the story in manga form and I'm really excited to go past uh, what was covered in the show. 
Last time I showed you Vinland Saga number one, well, here's volume two and three of these chunky hardcovers. I love that first season of Vinland Saga and the manga is always something that I wanted to uh, read and collect. I love how these books look on the shelf and yeah, I'm all in baby. <laughs> I did order some more, but you're gonna have to wait for another haul video to see those. I'm really excited to uh, continue my journey in manga form for Vinland Saga. The anime, not a whole lot. Here we have Berserk, the Golden Age Arc movie collection. Not my preferred art style for a Berserk adaptation, but nonetheless, it's still quite fun, sort of an, uh, an abridged version of the popular Golden Age Arc for Berserk. And I wanted to honor Miuda with different items from the franchise, whether it be an anime, possible figures, and stuff like that. So yeah, went ahead and picked it up because I love anime. I'm a huge anime fan and I wanted to get something berserk in animation form. I hope one day we get the 90s series in Blu-ray. That's the only reason I've held off from getting the old uh, DVDs. From Katsuhiro Otomo, we have Memories, the three short story compilation OVA. The main reason I got it, aside from being an Otomo work, is for the first story, Magnetic Rose, that is written by Satoshi Kon. So this goes towards my Kon collection, if you will, with all his movies and manga and all that stuff. Switching things towards graphic novels, here we have Al Ewing and Simone DiMeo's We Only Find Them When They're Dead from Boom Studios. And from Joshua Williamson, we have Birthright, a Western isekai comic that I highly recommend. I have a video on volume one if you want to check it out. I do like this title very much. Guilty pleasure of mine, here we have Xenozoic from the legendary Mark Schultz. I love the art on this, yeah, the overall aesthetic and just the concept alone and sort of this period piece, if you will, in comic book form where you're just mishmashing uh, pulpy artwork from back in the day with freaking dinosaurs in this action adventure that looks like it came right out of the 30s and 40s. So I love this so much. I love the attention to detail that it's in black and white, really, really excited to finally own a Xenozoic because I had missed the previous printing. So this is the new one in trade paperback form. I'm really excited about that. Just look at that wonderful art right there. From Image, uh, I had to do it. I love all the Rick Remender oversized books and I had to get Death or Glory. I didn't get volume two when they were coming out in trade paperback because I knew it's Remender, it's gonna happen. We're gonna get an oversized hardcover. And there it is, looking fantastic. I love this story so much. It's action packed, really badass with wonderful art from one of my favorite artists, Bengal. Next up, a huge shout out to my friend, uh, the Omnidog, Omnidog's Vault, for hooking me up with the vinyl soundtrack for Promare. I love this movie. But unfortunately, uh, it wasn't uh, Jess's cup of tea when he listened to the vinyl and he asked me if I wanted it. I'm like, oh, yes, <laughs> yes, please, because I had missed out on getting it. Although I think it's readily available. I'm not entirely sure on that, but nonetheless, really excited to own it. Uh, one of my favorite movies and soundtrack from uh, so wanna. Moving on to video games, I'm adding one more to the Switch collection, and that is Panzer Paladin, a side-scrolling action platformer from Tribute Games on the Switch and I believe Steam as well. You basically control a rescue service android that pilots a Paladin mecha grit, uh, sort of a suit with power armors and all that stuff. And together you slay demonic invaders using their own weapons against them. Obviously, the NES and SNES influences are loud and clear on this with stuff like <laughs> Mega Man or Zelda, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm really excited to play through this game. It looks awesome and just the overall aesthetics look really awesome. Now you're looking at this and thinking, wait a minute, PlayStation 5 game, what are you doing? Yeah, I had to do it, got myself Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. It's a wonderful game that I'm currently playing through, beautiful to look at. I'm, I'm not um, an expert on the Ratchet and Clank series, but this is easy enough and easy to get into where it doesn't really matter and you still have fun anyways. A great action packed uh, 3D platformer, it looks fantastic on the PlayStation 5 and that's of course because I hauled 
a PlayStation 5. Yes, <laughs> I was lucky enough to be able to score a, a system of my own. Been having a lot of fun with it. I've been playing uh, Ratchet and Clank and I installed my copies of Ghost of Tsushima and Immortals Phoenix Rising with the PS5 upgrade. Those look fantastic as well. So another adventure into my home console uh, experience with the PlayStation 5. So that's the haul, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when new videos pop up, like this video, and of course, let me know if you want me to review a specific product, leave those comments down below. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Stay safe, God bless, and I will catch all of you on our next video.